All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever this reaches you, it's this week. And, of course, this is the last week of 2021. And we're going into 2022. Things are going to be uh, changing for me. And and things are going to be changing around uh, in not only my life, but I'm sure yours as well. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be. I'll be going through all kind of different different things. Um, but um, main thing I want to look back. I know uh, I do want to say meeting uh, Koiki was was one of the big things that happened to me in 2021. Uh, I'll like I said at some point I'm gonna tell you everything. Right now I'm not. Uh, but I'd have to say go back to the early beginning part of the year when my grandson Cole Adrian Guichard was born. Uh, you know, my name, my, uh, well, we don't say step, but uh, son uh, Nick Guichard uh, and his wife uh, Martha Tyler Guichard, they uh, had uh, their baby boy back January 27th. Yeah, and uh, of course we'll be celebrating his birthday once we get into the new year. Uh, so uh, that was, you know, obviously the biggest moment becoming a grandfather for the first time but uh but yeah um like i said things are going to be changing uh i'm not changing jobs uh, i'm not leaving youtube i'm not leaving you now i'm not leaving tiktok i'm not leaving the jam sport I'm not ending the jam sports network so all that's going to stay the same but i will explain in detail some things on another video i'm going to let this go from here but of course you know as i always say my shout out to koiki and uh and we'll uh, move on from that. Um, uh, we went into 2021. You kind of had a feeling that uh, the Saints were going to struggle. With obviously, first year without Drew Brees. Defense played well enough. Or have been playing well enough to win games. Uh, I guess we need to look and see if... Think if, if Jameis Winston would have not gotten injured. Would they have been a five-game losing streak? I don't think so. I don't think they would have lost five straight. I, I, that's just me thinking out loud. I don't think they would have. But uh, did they would have won all those five? I don't know. I just know one thing, and I'm going to say this Monday night. I'm going to say this. Yeah, it was uh, you know not uh, not not pretty losing twenty to three to uh, Miami. I, that was not pretty. But there's a lot of misconceptions out there about why they played the game Monday night. Even Peter King of Sports Illustrated and Ralph Malbro of, of WWL-TV didn't pick up on one fact. The New Orleans Saints had the opportunity to postpone the game to Wednesday, which would have been they would have played last night instead of Monday night. They had the opportunity to they got, what, they had six, what, 12 of the players that came back yesterday? So you would have had 12 players that could have played yesterday. Yeah, so you, you see what I'm saying? Supposedly, the, what I'm hearing is that Gail Benson and Mickey Loomis made the decision to play this game. Now, maybe Sean Payton, and there was rumors saying that Sean Payton agreed to play it too, but I don't know. Judging by his post-game comments, I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. I, I don't think Sean Payton, I don't think they consulted Sean Payton. I think that was a Benson, Loomis, and, and Lotion decision. I don't think, I think they told Sean, you're playing the game. We don't want to delay. Dead, 22 players, 16 starters, that, that's way too many. That's way too many. I like that, and I, but I do like how Peter King put that. Uh, basically, what he said was, uh, that wasn't a professional team. That was not a professional football team. And, and it was, and he said it was like the masquerade ball. That's what it was. He called it a masquerade ball, which was an ugly masquerade ball to beat the boot. So, uh, but I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, they're saying the Saints were the ones that decided to play that game. But I don't know when you got Rob.
Roger Goodell in the, in the discussion. When you got Goodell in the discussion, wow, I'm looking at my face. Oh, well, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Maybe I, I got something going on there, but not sleeping enough or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, yeah, bags at the top, too. But, but anyway, um, going back to that, uh, basically, the way I look at it is this. Ultimately, somebody on the airline drive made the decision to play that game. But, like I said, as long as Goodell's in the picture, you never know. You never know if that was just a Goodell decision saying y'all playing. I don't know. You know, I, I, Ralph Melbro's usually pretty reliable. He, I mean, he's really reliable. He's actually a friend of mine, too. And Peter King is usually reliable. So, if they're saying that Goodell made a play, but then there's rumors running around New Orleans saying that, that, uh, Benson and Loomis decided to make this game happen Monday night. I don't know. Okay. LSU. Brian Kelly. He's making some good moves. And I'll say that. And I, I do like the fact that they hired Kevin House, the linebacker coach over at, uh, at uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs. I do like the fact that he hired him as his defensive coordinator. I like that move. I really like that move. I will say that. I think it's a good move. I think the direction they're going with uh, Cincinnati, uh, an assistant that they're trying to bring in to be the offensive coordinator, I, University of Cincinnati. I like that move, if if that's who they get. Uh, there's other, some, uh, a couple other candidates that were mentioned. But, uh, but, yeah, I like what Brian Kelly's doing so far. And for be here a very short time, less than two weeks, and he was able to keep 13 of the commitments and get them to sign on, on, on early signing day, I think that was a, a testament of, yeah, some people left town. There's some people left, but it happens all the time. You know, uh, they do leave and go to other colleges. Uh, and, uh, it happens all the time, but for them to get 13 up, now let's see if they can get the rest of their targets in and, and get a full class in, uh, but still got to know what they're going to do about transfer portal. Do they leave the quarterback position alone in the transfer portal? I think right now, yes. I think between uh, uh, Miles G uh, Miles Brennan, Garrett Nussbier, and Walker Howard coming in, uh, I think they leave the, the transfer portal alone for the quarterback position. Unless there's somebody out there that, oh, well, you know what, this guy might be heads and shoulders above everybody we got. But I think they're fine right now in the quarterback position. Not for the bowl game. Not for the bowl game. They're trying to get a waiver in order to have uh, Nussmeyer be able to play this game without losing his red shirt. Uh, since they really don't have anybody else that can play. Uh, I like the idea, now if they say no, I like the idea of John Trey Kirkland. I do like the idea of letting him play quarterback in this bowl game. I saw him play at luncher. I saw him play quarterback. He could play the position. Of course that was high school but I think he could bring some element to this game that would take K-State right out of their own defensive plan they wouldn't know what to do I, I really believe that I really believe this could be a big thing this could be something that that could help LSU but like I said I seen him play at luncher I seen him play quarterback so I know he can play the position I know he can throw the football but like they said, that was high school, this is college. But I think he's a pure athlete. I think that's what they drafted him as. I mean, drafted him. That's they signed him as an athlete. They moved him to receiver because that's where they needed help at the time. Uh, they didn't need him at quarterback. Um, but I think he could do it. I think given time, yeah, I think he could do it. So I guess it's up to the NCAA. Uh, they're going to have to make a decision this week. Because, I mean... You got to know who's going to be playing come Tuesday. You got to know who's going to be playing um, quarterback. So I think they need to get that done. Uh, I think they will get it done. Um, so yeah, that that decision's got to be made pretty quickly. 
Uh, so I think the NCAA probably by today will know that if he gets if if no spider get the waiver. If not, you go with Kirkland. I, I like that idea. I really do. Now going forward, uh, you like I said before, you know, you got Miles Brennan coming back off the portal and saying I'm going to go ahead and stay. I think Brian Kelly had a lot to do with that too. If I had to guess, I think it had a lot to do with that. I think he's coming back for that. Nussmeyer, of course, will be back. Uh, will he be a, a redshirt freshman or will he be a sophomore? We'll figure that out. We'll, yeah, it will be a second year redshirt freshman. We'll see. Um, and then Walker Howard come in, and I'm telling you right now, people, Walker Howard is a special talent. I'm telling you that. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay. Now, the Pelicans. I tell you what, lately they've been playing pretty well. I mean, they, they, I know they, they dropped the game at Oakley, Oakley City, but then you come back and you take on, on, on uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers and you, you come back from an 18-point deficit. Oh, by the way, the second biggest comeback in Pelicans history. Pelicans slash Hornets. Run in with old Hornets. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I think they're playing well. And, and to, for them to do it shorthanded on, on, on uh, Tuesday night, that was, a, that was a, a surprise. That really was a surprise, and, and it, was a, it was a good surprise. But uh, I tell you what, he might not be putting up new numbers, but Garrett Temple's looking pretty good as, as coming in and, and being with this team. So uh, I like it. Well, the range will be seen how it will it, be long term, but... I mean, B.I.'s here and the rest of them, but they were all out, um, and they still won that game. Um, Zion, I, I don't know. I, one day I'll come up and think, oh, well, he'll play again for the Pelicans, and then another day I'll say, oh, maybe he won't. Um, okay. Uh, so, like I said, 2022 is going to bring some changes for me. I will talk to everybody about Everything, and I will let you, let you know. But I, I let other people know. I gotta let uh, other people know first. Um, I don't want just certain people. I don't want to hear have them hear it on YouTube or Instagram or anywhere else. So I, I'll, I'll work on that. Oh, 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 oh! By the way, yeah, TikTok. I'm I'm, I'm just four away from 2,700 uh, followers, but TikTok. Why are you banning my friends, Seb Argo and Dion Yorkie, their Sebastian account? Why? Why? Is it, is it really because they're gay? Because if that's true, we can, yeah, I got problems with you too, TikTok. And yeah, we can't have that. That's not good. I, I, I think that's... Whatever they're doing, I think it's wrong. I, I look, I know how it is to be suspended. I've been suspended already. Somebody ratted me out and said I was driving while I was while I was broadcasting live. And I wasn't driving. So that's why now my camera's always positioned to where people can see that I'm not driving. That if TikTok moderator comes in there and says, Oh, is he driving? Let's suspend him. If he's driving a suspended come in and say, Oh, he's not driving. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. So, uh, yeah, TikTok, get yourself together. I, I like I like the platform. I, I, I didn't think I would, but I do. But uh, like I said, things are changing. I'm going to let people know everything uh, soon. And I hope everybody has a good 2022. I'm hoping mine is really well. I hope this pandemic can go not go away, it'll probably never go away, but subside enough to where we can kind of live a, li a, a normal life again. But uh, that's what I'm hoping, and everybody, uh, you know, I, I know, I don't know if people thought about 2021, it was good and bad for me. Uh, I did get the best, biggest pay raise of my life, <laughs> so that's one good thing. Uh, you know, the things, and, uh, and, and some of the things that's going on in my life, but... Uh, yeah, on that note, I will sign off. Everybody, have a happy new year. I will see you next year. Well, next week, but it'll still be next year. All right, and we'll be back with Bayou State Sports Saturday 
next Saturday. And yeah, so not not the first. We'll be back on the eighth. Uh, so God willing, I'll talk to y'all again in a little while. Bye.